name is Craig Tavani. I am usually in the role of director. <clears throat> the reason I'm dressed like this is because of the strange circumstances we have found ourselves in this year. Uh, with the COVID uh, quarantine uh, restrictions, one of our actors had to stay home. And so I took the role. This is the fall play, folks. <laughs> Today is the last day of January, or the last week of January. It's not the fall. Um, yet, this cast and crew has continued to work and stay together in order to present to you what you're about to witness. And I sure hope that you all appreciate what you're going to see. If not, don't talk. Okay. Now, I know you will because you're the family members of the cast, and I really thank them. So, without, oh, and of course, since I am usually the director, not the actor, I did not memorize the lines of Caliban. I just was told last night that I had to do this. Yeah, I was told by my wife. <laughs> <laughs> you think I wanted to do this? You <laughs> made me do it. <laughs> so I am going to be performing script in hand. Um, ladies and gentlemen, Phoenix for Ares High School Theater Guild's production of Shakespeare's The Tempest. This island's mine, by Sycrax, my mother, which thou hast taken from me. Boatswain, here, Master White Cheer. Good. Speak to the manners. Fall to we are, or we run ourselves aground. Bestir, bestir. Hey, my hearts, cheerly, cheerly, my hearts, yar, yar. Take in the top sail. Ten to the whistle. Blow till I burst thy wind of room enough. Have you a mind to sink the blocks that you throw, you falling, blasphemous, incharitable dog? Where are you in Hang, Connor, hang, you horse on, you insolent noise maker! We are less afraid to be drowned than thou art! A lord's him for drowning, though the ship are no strong in a nutshell, and his leak is an unstanched wench. Mercy on us! We split, we split, we split! Farewell, my wife and children! Farewell, my brother! We split, we split, we split! He'll be hanged yet, though every drop of water swear against it, and gave it widest to glut him. Let's all sink with the queen! Let's take leave of her. Now, this island's mine, by Sycorax, my mother, which thou takest from me, when thou camest here first. Father is of better nature than he appears by speech. 
This is unwanted, which now came from him. Beseech you, madam, be merry, you have cause. So have we all of joy, for our escape is much beyond our loss. Our hint of woe is common. Every day, some sailor's wife, the masters of some merchant, and the merchant have just off theme of woe. But for the miracle, I mean our preservation, few in millions can speak like us. Then wise good lady, wear our sorrows with our comforts. Prithee, peace. She receives comfort like cold porridge. The visitor will not give her of herself. <laughs> Look, he's winding up the watch of his wit. By and by it will strike. Madam. One, tell. Whenever grief is entertained that's offered, comes to the entertainer. A dollar? The law comes to him indeed. You have spoken truer than you proposed. <laughs> and you have taken it wiselier than I meant you should. Therefore, my lady. Fie, what a spendthrift is he of his tongue! I prithee, spare. Well, I have done, but yet. He will be talking. Which, for a good wager, of he or Adrian first begins to crow? The old cock? The cockerel. Done. The wager. A laughter. A match. Though this island seems to be desert. <laughs> so, you're paid. Uninhabitable and almost inaccessible. Yet? Yet. He could not miss it. It need be of subtle temperance, tender and delicate. Temperance was a delicate wench. Aye, and subtle as he most learnedly delivered. The air breathes upon us here, most sweetly. As if it had lungs, and rotten ones. <laughs> or as if it were perfumed by a fen. Here is everything advantageous to life. True, save means to live. And of that there is none, or very little. How lush and lusty the grass looks. How green. The ground indeed is tawny. With an eye of green in it. He but, misses not much. No, he mistake the truth totally. But the rarity of it is, which is indeed almost beyond credit. As many vouched rarities are. That our garments, being as they were drenched in the sea, would notwithstanding the freshness and glosses, being rather new dyed than stained with salt water. If but one of his pockets could speak, would it not say he lies? Aye, or very falsely pocket up his report. Methinks our garments is not as fresh as when we were in Africa, at the marriage of the Queen's fair daughter Clarebel to the King of Tunis. <laughs> Twas a sweet marriage, and, well, we prosper well in our return. Tunis was never graced before. Such a paragon to their queen. Not since Widow Ditto's time. Widow? A pox of that! How came that widow and Widow Ditto? <laughs> what if he had said widower anus to good lord, how you take it? <laughs> widow Ditto said you. You make me study of that. Dido was of Carthage, not of Tunis. This Tunis, sir, uh, was Carthage. Carthage? I assure you, Carthage. His word is more than the miraculous harp. It doth raise the wall and houses, too. What impossible matter will he make easy next? I think he will take this island home in his pocket and give it to his son for an apple. And sowing the kernels of it in the sea, bring forth more islands. Aye. Why, in good time. <laughs> madam, madam. We were talking that our garments is now as fresh as when we were in Tunis, at the marriage of your daughter to the king. Who is now queen? And the rarest that ever came there. A bait, I beseech you. Widow Ditto? Oh, Widow Ditto, eh, Widow Ditto? Is not, madam, my doublet as fresh as the first day I wore it? I mean, in a sort. That sort was well fished for? When I wore it at your daughter's marriage. You cram these words into my ears against the stomach of my sense. But I had never married my daughter there. For coming thence, my son is lost, and in my rate she too, who so far from Italy removed, I never again shall see her. O thou, mine heir of Naples and Milan, what strange fish hath made his meal on thee? Madam, he may live. I saw him beat the surges under him, and ride upon their backs. He trod the waters, and he flung aside, and breasted the surges. Surge, most swall, most swall that met him. His bold head both the contentious way we kept. Or to some of his good arms, and lusty stroke to the shore that over his wave-worn basis boat, a stooping to relieve him, I not doubt, he came alive to land. 
No doubt. No, no, he is gone. <laughs> Ma'am, you may thank yourself for this great loss that may not bless our Europe with your daughter, but rather lose her to an African, where she is at least Spanish from thine eye, who hath caused wet grief on it. Prithee, peace. <laughs> you were kneeled to and apportioned otherwise by all of us. The fair soul herself weighed between loathness and obedience, at which the end of the beam should bow. We have lost your son, I fear forever. Milan and Naples have more widows in them than we have in the making. The fault's your own. So is the dearest of the loss. My lady Sabina, the truth you speak doth like some gentleness, and time to speak it in. You wrote the woman which should bring the plaster. Very well. And most urgently. It is foul weather as all good lady when you are cloudy. <laughs> foul weather? Very foul. Had I plantaceous oh, my lady? He would sow it with nettle seed. Or docks or mallows. And were the king went, what would I do? Uh, escape being drunk for want of wine. In the commonwealth I would, by contraries, execute all things, for no kind of traffic would I admit. No name of magistrate, letters should not be known, riches, poverty, and use of service? None. Contract, secession, born, bound of land, tilth, vineyard, none. No use of metal, corn, or wine, or oil. No occupation. All men idle. All. And women, too. No sovereignty. Yet he would be king on it. The latter end of his commonwealth forgets its beginning. All things in common nature should produce without sweat or endeavor. Treason, felony, sword. Uh Pike, knife, gun? Or need of any engine would I not have, but nature should bring forth of its own kind, all poison, all abundance, to feed mine innocent people. No marrying among his subjects? None, ma'am, all idle whores and knaves. I would, with such perfection, govern, madam, to excel the golden age. God save his majesty. Long live King Gonzalo. And, oh, you mark me, madam? Pretty, no more. Thou dost talk nothing to me. I do well believe, Your Highness, and it's Mr. Occasion to these gentlemen who are such sensible and nimble lungs that they always used to laugh at nothing. Twas you we laughed at. Who, in this kind of merry fooling, am nothing to you. So you may continue and laugh at nothing still. Oh, what a blow was there given! And it had not fallen flat long. You are gentlemen of brave metal. You would lift the moon out of her sphere if she would continue in it five weeks without changing. We would so, and then go about fouling. Nay, good my sir, be not angry. No, I warrant you. I will not adventure my discretion so weakly. Will you laugh at me, for I am very heavy? Go sleep and hear us. What? All so soon asleep? I wish mine eyes would, with themselves, shut up my thoughts. I find they're inclined to do so. Please you so, madam, do not omit the heavy offer of it. It is a comforter, and it seldom visits sorrow. We too, my lady, shall watch your person while you rest, and guard your safety. Thank you, wondrous heavy. What a strange drowsiness possesses them. It is the quality of the climate. Why doth it not then our eyelids sink? I find myself not disposed to sleep. Nor I. My spirits are nimble. They fell together all, as by consent. They dropped as by a thunderstroke. What might, worthy Sabina? What might? No, no more. And yet, methinks I see it in thy face. The occasion speaks thee. And my strong imagination sees a crown dropping upon thy head. <laughs> what? Are thou waking? Do you not hear me speak? I do, and surely it is a sleepy language, and thou speakest out of thy sleep. It is a strange repose to be asleep with eyes wide open, standing, speaking, moving, yet so fast asleep. Noble Sabina, thou lets thy fortune sleep die, rather, wink us whiles thou art waking. Thou doth snore, their snores, they are distinct. I am more serious than my custom. You must be so too, if heed me which to do troubles be over. 
Well, I am standing water. I'll teach you how to flow. Do so, to add hereditary sloth instructs me. Oh, if you but knew how you the purpose cherish, while thus you mock it, how in stripping it you more invest it. Ebbing men indeed most often do so near the bottom run by their own fear of sloth. Prithee, say on, the setting of thine eye and cheek proclaim a matter in thee. It is a birth which throws thee much to yield. Thus, madam, this lord of weak remembrance, who shall be of as little memory when he is earth, uh, hath here almost persuade, for he's a spirit of persuasion, only professes to persuade, the queen her son's alive. Tis as impossible that he's undrowned as he that sleeps here swims. <laughs> I have no hope that he is underground. Oh, out of that no hope, what great hope have you? One, uh, no hope one way is another way, so high a hope that even ambition cannot pierce a wink beyond. Doubt discovery there. Will you grant with me that Ferdinand is undrowned? Ferdinand is gone. Then who is the next heir of Naples? Clarabel. She that is queen of Tunis? She that dwells ten leagues beyond man's life? She that can have no note? Until the sun were post, the man in the moon's too slow, until newborn chins be rough and razorable, she thought, from whom? We all were sea swallowed, though some cast again, and by that destiny do perform an act where what's past is prologue, what to come in yours and my discharge. What stuff is this? How say you? Tis true, my sister's daughter's queen of Tunis, so she is the next heir of Naples. Twixt region, there is some room. A space whose every cubit seems to cry out. How shall that Clarabelle measure us back to Naples, keep in Tunis, and let Sabina wake? Say this were death that thou hast seized them. They were no worse than now they are. There be that that can rule Naples as well as she that sleeps, and lords that can prate as and Ambly and unnecessarily is this Gonzalo. I myself can make a chuff of as deep a chat. Oh, that you bore the mind that I do. What a sleep this were for your advancement. Do you understand me? Methinks I do. And how does your content tender your own good fortune? I do remember you did supplant your brother Prospero. True, and look how well my garments sit upon me. My brother's men were then my fellows. Now they are my men. But for your conscience. Aye, ma'am, where lies that? T'were a kind would not put me to my slipper. But I feel not this deity in my bosom. Twenty consciousness stand twixt me and Milan. Melt are they, and can't need be they molest. Here lies your sister. No better than the earth she lies upon. If she were that which now she's like, that's dead whom I, with this obedient steel, three inches of it, can lay to bed forever. Whilst you doing thus to this perpetual rank for an eye, this sir morsel, this, uh, Ancient prudence, who should not upbraid our course. As for all the rest, they'll take suggestion as a cat laps milk. They'll tell the clock to any business we say befits the hour. If thy case, dear friend, shall be my president, as thou goest to Milan, I'll come by Naples. Draw thy sword, one stroke shall free thee, and I, the queen, shall love thee. Draw together, and when I, uh, I raise my hand, do you the like to fall at on Gonzalo. Oh, but one word. My master through his art foresees the danger that you, his friend, are in and sends me forth, for else his project dies to keep them living. While you here do snoring lie, open-eyed conspiracy his time doth take. If of life you keep a care, shake off slumber and beware. Awake, awake! Then let us both be sudden. Now, good angels, preserve the queen. Why, how now? How awake? Why are you drawn? Wherefore this ghastly looking? What's the matter? Let's draw their weapons. Whilst we stood here securing your repose even now, we heard a bellowing, a burst, a bellowing, like bulls, or rather lions. Did it not strike your ear? It struck mine ear most terribly. I heard nothing. Oh, twas a tin to fright a monster's ear to make an earthquake. Sure, it was the roar of a whole herd of lions. <laughs> Heard you this, Gonzalo? Upon mine honor, madam, I heard a humming, and that a strange one too. I shaked you, madam, and cried, as I saw the weapon strong. Tis best we stand upon our guard. Or that we quit this place. Let's lead off this ground and make further search for my poor son. Heavens keep him from these beasts, for he is surely in the idol. Lead away. 